It is Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So there's only one, one, I said one place to be uh, here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football for Florida State Seminoles live. We got Jason Parker at the top from NBC6, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day, and Big Game James from the car, Coleman, fifth quarter college football. That's a lot to spit out. If you add any more um, tags to that, James, I'm going to be in trouble. But how are you boys doing tonight? Good. Good, good, good. Now, good James, to see everyone. James, we want to give the we want to give the viewers a chance here. For those who are watching at home, James is going to get some dinner real quick before his radio gig tonight. So, James, what are our decisions here? What are our choices? Uh, we've got um, there's Jersey Mike's, okay. faux, some faux place. Okay. Um, Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's. Um, Oh, Chick -fil I had Chick Fil A yesterday, so I'm not in for breakfast. I'm not eating that again. Um, oh, I know what I'm getting. Never mind. What are we getting? I'm going to go to Bojangles. I'm going to Bojangles. Bojangles. I'm getting some Bo Rounds and a, and a ticket sandwich. It's all trust. You can take that to work. Low now. So for the record, it only took about 28 seconds for Jason to relinquish the hosting role. Well, I do actually have, <laughs> I have a serious thing that we do need to talk about real quick, and I do want to talk to the viewers uh, for a moment. Um, last Tuesday, before we went into our in-depth conversation with Forest Athletics, um, there was a, a, a horrible moment when one of our other people here, Logan, decided to wear a Texas A&M hat. And I wanted to apologize to the viewers because that's not what we're here to give you. We're here to give you the best in Florida State. And I feel like there are some people that question his loyalty. We know Logan. We'll eventually graduate from Florida State. He's going to spend his redshirt senior year up there here in the 2020 season. But mm -hmm. we just want you to know that we here yeah, at Mark Rogers TV, Florida State Live, we are a Florida State group. We, we love Florida State. That's who we are. all about Florida State. Okay, we, Florida State, number one. Wow, yeah, so he copies me. We are all about Florida State here. We support Florida State no matter what. And and we are all about that. So wow, unbelievable copying my kind of oh uh, crap. Marketing sorry. You know what? That's that's my fault. I was doing a fan you blog earlier, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna go change real quick. I, just, I apologize. That's my fault. <laughs> Logan, truth be known, uh, I had to bypass James uh, as well. Uh, I had to bypass about three Ohio State T-shirts to grab this one. So I I had enough respect oh. for the show. And for the brand to go, okay, no, 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 no. And then that's 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 my fault. I'm sorry. All I right. Doing, I was doing something with with a different guy. We were talking about family football in 2020. I apologize. That that's on me. I forgot to change. I'm sorry. Which is of course the monster live stream that you oh dozens are involved of people, in every week. Dozens yes. of people want to know about what's going on at Memorial Stadium. Massive. <laughs> I was gonna throw in here real quick before we even get started. This is huge. Redbeard said for every like, this is the mm -hmm. first time we've ever had someone do this, for every like, he's donating a dollar. Every like we get on the show tonight from 7 All to 8, right. we needed to shout that out for sure. But Redbeard says he's going to donate $1 for every like. So that makes it even more important to hit that like button and hit the share button. Hit the bell, like James says, so you'll be notified every time Mark goes live. Hit that like button. We're at 22 so that's $22 right now. 23, it's going up quickly. We got to get this to Redbeard. Redbeard, we got to get Coming this to 100. Through. I'm sorry, Redbeard, but oh, we're going to get man. it to 100 before this show is over. Red, bankrupt Redbeard yeah. before the night is over. Bankrupt he, that he man. Should, he probably should have put like a, a time limit. Like if <laughs> at 7 30, <laughs> however many likes are there. Well, like going going that is phenomenal, Redbeard. Yeah. I cannot uh, thank you enough. Uh, I know that this isn't going to go into any kind of overtime session. Or any well, maybe we do take it to an overtime session. But anyway, uh, that this won't extend to a you know a re-air uh, pledge that you're making. But we did have 130 likes. Uh, Logan had set the bar at 120 for the show last week, and we're at 130 for the show last week. If if what it involves, if what it involves, did I make a bet? If it involves bankrupting Redbeard, I will filibuster the hell out of the show. Like we'll go into quadruple overtime here. We will this will go on for hours. As Amazing, as Redbeard. Redbeard, you should have been in the conversation I was in just a few minutes ago because I, I simply told um, the person I was on the phone with that all I need to do is multiply the Mark Rogers TV Voice of College Football revenue here at YouTube 10 times per month, and I think I'm in okay. good shape uh, to cut loose. Just, just tenfold. That's it. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Thanks to yeah. Redbeard. 
Yeah, major shout out. So we're at we're at we're, we're nearing forty already. This is we're already rolling. So um, if you haven't hit that like button, new people will come in too. So maybe in the half of the show in the end, we'll remind some more people. But it helps I tell bring you, in more if these kind of contributions keep up, I'm going to start like a a wall of plaques, honorary <laughs> members or something. And Redbeard's going to be bam, he's going to be right there. I'd also mm -hmm. like to know why the hell you've got a hurricane guy up here in the comment section right here. Our first guy's nine hundred four hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I, I I go in order. I go in order. Here is the stipulation, Jason. I go in order, and anybody who's not having a private conversation, like if we have no idea yeah. what they're talking about, and they're talking to somebody else, I we we serve all college football fan bases here, and mm -hmm. I post the comments, uh, and I and I spare you, Jason, a little bit in regards to some of the more derogatory uh, slams on you. I I, oh, I keep those oh. in the, in the, in the, the, the live chat. That's what I'm saying. So I wearing a fan <laughs> shirt. I know that there's going to be people. Wanting to make comments about that. There's been comments about my religion, comments about the fact that I said I had a man crush on James. People commented about, about that. I get it. Trust me. I, I I am America's most wanted here with Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. And that's fine. Hate it or love it, I'm going to shine. We need to feature James a little bit more prominently tonight than we typically yeah. do for two reasons. Because he's going to be chewing throughout uh, a portion of the show tonight. And then also, we don't get him for like the last 10 minutes. So let's get to some nuts and bolts here. We got Deion Sanders' son going to FAU as a quarterback. And we are a little bit sketchy on the pronunciation of his first name. Uh, Shadur. Shadur? Okay. There right. it is. And now you say it. I never, mm, I, I did so. not see the spelling myself. I should say our two uh, illustrious panelists over here, analysts, we, they they were a little bit unsure. I didn't see the spelling myself. I keep on calling him Schrader, but it's never that. I always think about what's his name who committed to FSU. I keep on calling him Schrader, but that's not correct. Now, now, J now James, we all know Logan is going to still defend Mike Norvell, that Mike Norvell did nothing wrong. He's going to figure out some way to blame Willie Taggart for this. So from the football side, why does why does Dion Sun go to FAU? What 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 do you think was the reason behind his decision? Because he got offered from a lot of different schools. Why do you think he chose FAU? Man, listen, man. I'm gonna preface this. Dion Sanders is the greatest corner is is arguably one of the greatest cornerbacks to ever play um, football. Um, there's only one other person um, that's. Um, close to him and he's also a seminal and that's Terrell Buckley. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you like Deion Sanders doesn't fuck with Florida State like that. Like I don't understand why people are shocked or why people like are like just look at your history outside of when he's played. Like you could count on both hands since he left the amount of times that he's come onto FSU's campus and the bulk of them were in the last two years with Willie Taggart. And there was a relationship, there is a rapport with Willie Taggart. And he had his son, and then that's, so that's one thing. And then secondly, his son is good for where he's going. Like he can develop into an NFL quarterback, possibly be very exciting to watch. But he's a Louisville, FAU, Louisville type guy if you're power five. And he's an FAU top prospect of all time. And that so just those simple things right there. But I wouldn't want to go to Florida State if I was Deion son. What if you suck? Like if you suck and you're Deion Sanders' son, it is very difficult to be at Florida State where your dad's history is literally everywhere um, around there. And your dad is going that's the only reason he'll be there for the next three to four years. So everywhere Deion goes, there is an entourage, there's a crowd. And there's a lot of stuff that goes with it. So I think it was the best decision for him as a young man. And I don't think um, White Mike really recruited him. Like, Coach Norvell has who he wants in his mind. In 2021, there's a kid out in California that I believe he really has his eye on. If he was going to flip, get us somebody, I think that's the person that he would really try to get to. If not, he's got who he wants at quarterback. So there's no need to really go for, for – um, Sanders, but I think it's more of a thing where everybody should just say that's a great get for Willie Taggart and just leave it at that. Florida State didn't miss. Louisville missed because it was a Louisville battle, and it was Louisville until the end from what I understand. 
Do I need to pick a fight with Big James for the first time ever? Oh, I'll have. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just unreal. wondering, you know, Deion I mean, Sanders is, is without question. Well, we'll this one for uh, whether, whether we go college football or the NFL, Deion Sanders is a cover corner. The tackling is a bit uh, in question. But, of course, covering the the man-on-man -man is the number one job of a cornerback. But Terrell Buckley is a, is a collegiate player. Are we taking that to the next level? I'll say more collegiate, but if you really go Google them, Google the stats. I, I watched Terrell it, Buckley play. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, statistically, T. Buck is literally right there in every statistical category with Dion, except for he did it on different multiple teams. And mm -hmm. we know, we know Dion Sanders. T. Buck, T. Buck's biggest problem is that T. Buck isn't braggadocious. Mm -hmm. If T. Buck was braggadocious, which he has every right to be. T Bug would be um the fool as it was it the fuller from Pascoola is what his nickname was. Mm -hmm. If he really acted a fooler, we would all know more about T Bug. But statistically speaking, accolades speaking, mm -hmm. especially in the college in college, he actually he's he has more accolades in college than Dion had. And then in the NFL, again, it's no knock on primetime. Primetime is the guy, but I said I actually I I just think T Bug, I have to always put that in there because I don't think T Bug gets the respect that he, he deserves. No, I think yeah. that's amazing because I thought he was great too. And I'm a huge NFL guy. I actually, probably know more about the NFL in terms of NFL history, uh, even more than college football history. T Buck, I consider him a Dolphin slash Packer. Uh, but yeah, number 27, great, great cornerback. I just never really elevated him as a NFL player, as a sure. collegiate player. Yes. First of all, he was a Dolphins cornerback. I know he played for the Packers first, but we all remember him as a Dolphins cornerback. Let's keep it real. Not, <laughs> well, now that I'm keeping it real, me keeping it real with letting you know that I that's how I see him as a Packer <laughs> and a Dolphin. <laughs> well, Logan, though, I'm going to get back to Logan and talk about the current okay. Sanders. I'm not. Like, no, no, here's my question for you real quick. Shador Sanders ranks number 41 in ESPN's 300 right now. The highest uh -huh. that Florida State has in the 2021 class is Brandon Jennings, who is the son of Bradley Jennings, former linebacker from Florida State. Is there any concern at this point that you've got a guy like using an example? I know James is over there laughing right now, but using a guy who's number 41 as opposed to another guy who our highest guy is number 69. Are you concerned at all? No. No. no Mike, not even a bit. Because Mike Norvell. Not even a bit. Mike Norvell is the greatest coach ever. I get it. <laughs> I mean, I don't really – I don't think really FSU fan – no one was – I know no one here in Tallahassee, I know anybody covering FSU were even thinking that he was – like Florida State was in like the running for Sanders more as I think fans knew that Norvell and staff weren't after um, Sanders. I don't even think we need to talk about it too much more because it just gives prime time some more. I think it gives TMZ more of a story than anything. Um, Norvell knows what quarterback he wants. He's got Luke Altmyer coming and he's really high on him. There's also, like James said, there's other guys out there that he's still working on to bring in depth to. Um, and plus he's still got young cats uh, here. But the whole Sanders thing is ridiculous because primetime hasn't really given too much of a damn. Willie Ta Taggart did his best at trying to get primetime to come to a bowl game, and he did that and um, all this kind of jazz and just whatever you want to call it. Just primetime is primetime. I've had him on our podcast before, and he does admit that he's very busy. He's got He's a businessman, a lot of TV a lot of marketing stuff that he does behind the scenes. So he barely has any time. And whenever FSU fans were complaining that he wasn't coming to games, he told us it's because he's also coaching at his school. Mm -hmm. So he barely has time to come to games in Tallahassee. There might be some chances where he could probably come up for just a few, uh, but he'd rather stay at home and relax and put his Instagram videos out there of him working out and such. Um, so, and going fishing. So I, I, this is not anything, no kind of hit at FSU whatsoever. Um, and I agree with James. I think that um, the, the kid has more of a potential to really play and develop uh, at FAU. Um, I don't really think of the coaching staff as high as maybe I would think maybe here under Dillingham. But um, he'll get a chance to play and he'll compete also with Willie Taggart's son, um, who has some athleticism too. So I think it will be a good battle. And But – uh, the, the sun sure does have a lot of um, 
he's bold and, and he said he's going to be starting as a true freshman no matter what. So um, I have a wide receiver. I played football here at Childs and he's a, he's going to be a senior this year. So I'll be interested in getting some intel and, and word from him whenever the hopefully season starts and see how that quarterback room is going. But hopefully things work out. And I think uh, they FAU, um, I think Willie Taggart just started a new dance class uh, there. So I think uh, – however you say his first name is going to um, maybe develop in that kind of way too. a little salsa dance, maybe a little before games and whatnot, have a good time. It's called, it's called intro to having a better record than our Seminoles. Uh, but I would love to rip Mike Norvell if I could, but I'm going to agree with James. And as much as I hate to admit, it, I'm going to agree with Logan a little bit. on that. <laughs> I know it sucks. I have to, it's more of a big name because it's Dion's son. He is going to be a good quarterback. I think James hit the nail on the head. He's a perfect type quarterback for FAU's style. I think the fact that Florida State, once you got both Chuba and Tate Roadmaker, I think that kind of shut the door on quarterbacks coming in from this time. And, and like James said, they're looking at other guys coming in. So it's not the end of the world. What the hell are you doing, Mark? I'm reminding everyone of Mike Norvell's record before you rip on him. Oh, I, he's, he's O and O. That's fine. Okay. We're going to know soon what James has ordered for uh, dinner tonight, I believe. At, 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 oh, oh, easy. Cajun, Cajun sandwich, Cajun sandwich and bow round. Okay. At, there at it is. Excuse me, Cajun club sandwich and bow round. At the rate the ACC is going right now, this will be his record at the end of the 2020 year. It, it, it very oh, well could well, be. You don't, want to be. you don't want to be pessimistic, though. Just, I'm much oh, tempted to keep this comment on the screen from Redbeard, uh, the dollar offer per like, but we'll move on. It's not being pessimistic, Logan. It's a fact. Do I want us to have college football? Of course. Could it possibly? We just have to be realistic. There is a chance we may not have football this year. Let's just be honest. And we'll, we should bring up now a little bit of football action out on uh, on the field the last and two days. before we do that, yeah. I just want to wrap up. I just got to say this about Shadur. Oh, he's not any good. He's What's not that? any good. Right, just, I'm just going to say he's not any good. He's a, he's a good athlete. He's just not Dion. Like He's, he's Dion's son. That's the only reason, like, like I, I hope he's good. He's FAU good. If Before was, I read the two four seven composite, good. James, that that plays into it. Does the Dion connection yes. play into the composite? I saw, okay. I've seen him throw. Like, if you've seen him okay. throw at, in a live camp, like when he came to the um the Saturday the SNL, he was not. He was. He's clearly. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't the no, the number one quarterback there. I didn't he's even know he was athlete. committing. I had no idea he was committing. Yeah, he's a good athlete, and it's great. It's a great get for FAU. I would not want to belittle that. But Alabama's offered him. Nick Saban ain't crying. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of guys. Like And, and what we have, even if you go for, away from the 247 composite, and we want to just look at the pro style guys, he's not better than what we have right now. He's not better than Carlos um, Del Rio, um, the guy of Florida. Um, I just think he's a, I think he's a very good athlete. But when I look at Texas ball, right, all the good schools in Texas have this one thing in common. The stadium is full. It's fri It's the movie was wasn't called Friday Night Daytime. It was called Friday Night Lights. When I watch his highlight film, I see a lot of sunshine and I see empty stadiums, which that means he's playing small school ball in Texas. You give me that. And that's not saying he can't perform. And I don't want to want anybody coming back to me in four years if he's balling at FAU and say, James, you said he couldn't do it. I just don't think at, at this time that's where he's at. But I think he made the best decision for him in a city that can handle all of that personality. Because so Tallahassee don't need all that. To me, to me it's more of a bad – oh, not bad look is not the right – it's more of a, a, a questionable look at the fact that He's and I, and I get the rankings. We've talked about five stars, four stars, and whatnot. But the fact that he is nearly thirty spots higher than our highest player right now in the twenty twenty one class, as far as commitments, that would be my concern. There's plenty of time for things to change. Obviously, we need to figure out when we can get recruits back on campus. There's a long way to go. That is my biggest concern, and that's, that's a ESPN though. No. Amplified. That, that's ESPN. He's ranked the four, He's the fourteenth ranked pro style quarterback. With two four seven, um, Luke Altmaier is ranked the twelfth. Okay. So I mean, those. Are, so it just all depends on which one you you, you look at. But I don't. I don't. Again, I just go by what I what I see. Mm -hmm. And I, the, I, 
I think he's a good – I think he's a tremendous athlete, but I need a guy who can read defense. I don't need a guy who can run around right now. Our offensive line is good enough oh, to man. have a guy that can run around like that. So, but, yeah, that's my – I'm sorry, Mark. I was just – it's just, I also don't like Deion, but it just that was bubbling in my spirit, and I just had yeah. to like get that yeah. off my chest. Sorry yeah, for having what me. are you apologizing for, James? That's why we got you on here. He just came out with that fire, man. Like he was, he was waiting for that one. Like he was waiting in line. Like he was. Damn, James. I I, I just I don't want to hold. My, I would never hold my son. Um, I would never hold a university hostage over my son. Let me tell you that much. My son's not good enough to go to Florida State. The first person that's going to tell him that is James. It's not gonna have to be. It's not gonna be somebody else. <laughs> can, we, can we also point out real quick? James is fired up in the drive-through line. Logan looks like Adam Schefter over here. He's got the phone going. Cats are going across the screen. God knows what's going on with Mark up there in Connecticut. I don't know what the hell is going on. I've got people. I've got people calling me fifty thousand times. They have the wrong number. It's Jesus criminy. Just <laughs> shut the effing phone off. And by the way, who was invited to the Elite Eleven? Luke Altmaier or Strader, Shredder, Sanders, Prime Time. First of all. First of all, Shredder was from Change Me Ninja Turtles. Let's get this right here, okay? Let's get his damn right. That's all I need to know. In case, great, great, great pickup for FAU eh, if he would have came to FSU. And, and guess what? Luke Allmeyer, for all the talk about him, there's a chance he could go to Alabama. I don't think he will. I think he will stick with Florida State, but we just have to be honest about it. They, Alabama's got their QB, I think. Now, there was a missed booster opportunity, though. I will say that. Because if Dion was here, right. you'd throw a party and it'd be a lot of money. But you can say the same thing for Peter Warg, son. If Peter Warg would have, they would have gave one scholarship to Peter Warg, son, or, and that would have been that. Now, what what Tag does have and what Tag can throw is a hell of a party. And I will say this: I partied with Warren Sapp before. That man can go. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got Warren Sapp Jr. He's got Michael Lerman Jr. Who's not uh-huh. good either. Terrell Owens. Uh, he's, Terrell got Peter Ward, um, mm-hmm. he's got Terrell Owens. Terrell Owens. He's, he's got like that 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 environment as a recruit or as a recruit's parent. A recruit's parent is gonna be it's gonna be I might have to like try to see if I can get my son. He's only he was seven. I don't know what the rules are, but I want to take an unofficial to FAU. I just want to hang out. I don't really I'm not really interested in him going there, but like that party is probably gonna be dope. Well, as Willie Taggart's personal assistant, as Logan has basically given me that title in previous shows, I can get you guys in there. We can go we can go talk to Willie and get him in there. What are you holding up on the screen? That's a Florida State player with a mask on. Well, mask on his neck. That's Dent with no dreads? Yep. yep. He cut him off. Maybe that will help him catch those picks. I mean, that's what a lot of people – oh, God, I was so offended when people were saying. I wanted to cuss people out. Not because of dreads, and I don't get easily offended. It was just how stupid. People were, do you think the dreads are making or <laughs> affecting him catching the ball? No, he just can't catch. It happens. That's why he's a DB. If he could catch, he'd be a wide receiver. Damn, James came out hot tonight. I like this. This is the new James Coleman. This is his mama fine, though. I can tell you that my friend. Man. Well, mama did Jennifer Fields. Uh, if you <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> yeah. he's a, he's, uh, if, I, I'm I'm here for it though. If that haircut helped him, God bless, can't wait. Yeah. We're gonna win some games. I know that more. what I'm looking at more as too is uh he's got a little he's got his brace on, but remember he was still recovering after a broken ankle uh right. before uh spring practice, so he's back in action. He's got a little baby brace on now. This is tremendous. We got Logan with the visuals here. Can we please contribute to our fun so that we can get some real graphics, real technology, pull the pictures up on the screen, not Logan having to hold his phone up. Me holding a phone up with a picture of me and Willie Taggart. Can we do this, please, guys? It was a big deal for me. <laughs> it was a big deal for me just to be able to take the uh, the YouTube uh, live chat and post the comments to the screen. Hey, we're getting there. It comes yeah. in stages, exactly. Here, here's PSB. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what we got here. <laughs> what do we want to do here. James, are you sure we want to look on your phone? Whatever is in that library, oh, should no, we? No, we're not looking at James. <laughs> No, oh, did y'all see me back? Did hey, I come back after the phone? Yeah, no, no Jack, we're, not we're, we're, we're good. Yes. That. <laughs> you know, you have those people on Facebook that are like, you know, give us your seventh picture on your roll, and I'm always like, mm. no, yeah, no. not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, scary. The other, the other big news of the day, Mark, we talked about this a little bit beforehand. Florida State has moved their season opener in the 2021 season. 
to Sunday night. The Notre Dame game was going to be on Labor Day on September 6th, 2021. It has now been moved to Sunday, September 5th, 2021, inside Joe Campbell Stadium on a Sunday night. That'll probably be the ABC national game. And that means that for three straight seasons, 2021, 2022, 2023, Florida State will be the Sunday night game. What are your thoughts on that one, Logan? That'll be fun. As you know, I'm, I'll still have – well, not by then I won't be in school, but uh, right. Sunday night in Doak will be a little weird. Uh, yeah. But I think that'll be fun. And obviously it's a big game. I think a lot of Florida State fans, at least on social media inside the Discord, they were like, worried that they, that they had moved uh, Notre Dame to this season to start off. Um, but uh, no, that wasn't the case. It's 2021. <laughs> Sunday night in Doak. We're in church, baby. We're going to church. It's going to be then- a beautiful night. It's going to be beautiful. I'm... I can drink right on Sunday, right? I can drink. Is that like against the law or is that like a, you know, can we, do I get a pass for that one? That's, to, that's Alabama, go? Mississippi. Uh, okay. Cause I'm, I'm, I, I'm, ain't no blue laws. Ain't no blue laws in the state of Florida. I'm Jewish. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to stay out of this conversation. So <laughs> let's, let's bring you three Christians over there. I'm going to stay out of this one right here. Don't, don't uh, well, hopefully Florida I'll State. Be drunk. I'll be drunk. I'll be taking communion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll take communion shots. Uh, but I think that'll be – and that's, it's going into hopefully Mike Norvell's second season. If this one's still going. Uh, so uh, it, it should set up to be a pretty big game, uh, honestly. You get guys that have ran through already uh, Kenny and, and Mike Norvell's offense. Adam Fuller, there's a piece coming out or came out earlier today uh, or yesterday talking about his defense, and he's a rising star in college football right now as a D.C. and what he can, might be able to do with this talent so um it, it, pre- it prepares for a big game uh and doe campbell stadium on sunday night um and like james said there will be some uh drinking involved and i'll enjoy it because we won't have anything going on monday i might have no my no we won't have work but we'll see now james my question would be right now we we have not seen mike norvell has not played a game has not coached a game yet we don't know what we're going to have I'm wondering why why the move to move this game. I mean, it wasn't going to be on Labor Day night, national TV audience. Now it's on a Sunday, national TV audience. I guess my question would be, why put all that extra pressure on when we have not seen a product yet? I mean, there's all this anticipation. We're hearing a lot of talk about Mike Norvell, what could happen, what could happen. What happens, worst case scenario, if this season doesn't turn out the way a lot of experts think? Virginia Tech, two years ago, that's what happens. Exactly. Um, Right, but I don't understand the pressure part. Like, I mean, it was going to be a night game anyway. Um, now it's Sunday night, but for me, when I'm thinking about it, it's better for travel. I mean, I personally don't care. I I'm my own boss. I just have to stumble to talk. I have to stumble back to Jacksonville and be ready to talk trash on radio for a couple okay. hours. So that's the only thing I have to do. But if I'm the normal person, you have a good time on Sunday. You sleep in late on Monday you actually travel back so that you're ready to work on Tuesday. So that helps you with that. And if they're looking at making sure all the hotels are filled, all the bars are full, hopefully the COVID has disappeared magically um, uh, or all this other stuff. And I think that's really what it has to do with it because you're going to want this to be a big recruiting um, event. So like, that's the other part of it. So I, I think that's really what it comes down to. I mean, the game is there. To be honest with you, this is why people are like, Mike Norvell, what James, what do you think FSU should go or what do you think Mike will go? And I'm like, he's got to win eight, to, he's got to win nine games, eight minimum, but he's got to win nine. They're like, why? Because the, every season after that doesn't get any easier. If you can't do it with this schedule, I'd be damned if you're going to do it with the schedules coming up like that with, with better teams on it. So, and you, you got to, if winning gets recruits, then you got to win now. And then you got to hope to get um, that energy and get Doke back rocking. Cause that was, um, that was sad when, um, when I think about not just tags year, all of the years. Cause like all the excuses, noon kickoff, blah, blah, blah. I played in a lot of noon games at Doke. Noon used to be a primetime game. That bad boy was full of drunk college students too. So we got to get that atmosphere to where it's actually intimidating and, you know, people come back. One of the things I love hearing former players of other schools saying is, like, I hated that damn war chant. Like, right now, you don't even hear a damn war chant. Like, it's just 
it's just it's, it's professors reading books. So that, that's what you got at Florida State right now, which isn't intimidating. So um, I think that's that's what we got to look for. I can only think Austin like- Keynes, uh, uh, I'd like to get to a few of these questions because we've Did got all sorts of questions firing our way. Yeah. Austin Keynes wants each of us to put a percentage on the likelihood that we will have a college football season. I'll say 70%. I'd say of a season, regardless of the number of games, I think that there is a, a 75% chance that we have a – using FSU, as FSU only think FSU will play at least nine games. I think that the ACC will have their eight games. I think the ACC will work out something to allow the Florida-Florida State game to happen, allow the Georgia-Georgia Tech game. However, they're going to figure that out, maybe work out Notre Dame with a couple of the other ACC teams. So I would say a 75% chance that there is some season. Of a full 12-game season, 25 to 20% at this point right now, and that's dwindling. I mean, you can't have too much confidence at this point when the ACC has already canceled their virtual media days. They've canceled people meeting around a computer. Doing what we're doing right now has been canceled, so I don't think that there's a lot of confidence that we are going to see the 2020 season like we thought. Jason has turned a simple question into like a three-minute dissertation. I pulled a James Coleman. You've asked James Coleman yes or no question before. Uh, 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 six what minutes. is the what percentage is the- chance that we will have a college football season? I said 70%. Then you talked for three minutes, and I still don't know what your answer was. I said 75%. It's the first thing I said. Open your ears. Jeez. <laughs> and then you said if this happens, or maybe that happens, or maybe they could do this, or maybe they could yeah. do that. Listen, I, I get I get that you 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 like to egg on the viewers, you like to egg on the people here. I don't know Logan's committing animal cruelty from cats across the room. James James is eating chicken sandwiches like a champ here. I don't know what's going on. We've lost control here. What we haven't lost control of though is that Redbeard is has made his a commitment to a dollar per like, and he's continuing to pour on and 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 post more. Um, Encouragement for everyone to um, hit the like button. Redbeard. Yes. Love it. Hit, keep you. hitting that like button. Keep hitting that like button. What are we at? What are we at? Let's see. You know what we are at? We are at halftime. 57? We have almost 90 people watching, and we only have 57 likes. Is that what that is? 58? But instead of watching the Marching Chiefs at halftime, which you won't see that much this season because of our short season, we've got our own halftime show for you. The Marching Logan Robinsons telling you why you – should hit the like button. I don't ever want to be called that ever again. Well, that's never. what I call. You got called. So march on. Never again. Never again. Uh, but yeah, hit the like button. We're only at 62. We have about close to 90 people watching. Hit the like button so then it will share to more FSU fans. And every like tonight will equal $1. So right now we're at $62. Um, and more likes, the better if you're on your iPhone. And it should be off to the side. You can just go down and do vertical view, whatever you want to call it, portrait view, and hit the like button, and it will help out the stream. And hit the subscribe button, too. If you're new and you you didn't know this, we do this every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. But make sure you're hitting the like button because uh, when, when football season comes a little bit closer, we have a lot of FSU fans coming here, and we're answering questions, and it's a lot more organized. Right now we're trying to find things to talk about because it's so dead, but um, make sure you hit that like button so we can see on Tuesday, Tuesday nights. Well, I've got two questions for everyone. Two questions that, here. One, one. What, where did that come from, Jason? That was what, Super, what are we showing everyone? That was Super Bowl Media Day. That was me interviewing Hollywood Brown from the Ravens, the team that swept the Steelers this season. Never nervous about him. So you should be. Moving on. There's Dion right there. there. Question, question number one. There's Dion. F-A-E question track. number one. Question number one comes courtesy Redbeard, who is wondering if there uh, are only conference games throughout the Power Five, how that will affect, and this is pure speculation, but we can all chime in, how that will affect the college football playoff decision. I have my thoughts, but I'll serve it up for you three first. I got yelled at last time. Or maybe I'll start first, because I've already said this. So basically... If you're going to look at it fairly, if you're going to look at it fairly and there are five conferences and they're only playing conference games, then there is absolutely no way to compare the conferences, correct? So while there's an assumption that the SEC is the best and the Pac-12 might be the worst or the ACC or whatever, you can't make that assumption because nobody's playing each other. 
So I would think that if the college football playoff committee did what was somewhat fair, and this isn't really fair, but you only have four slots for five conferences, is you obviously take the teams with the four best records. And then if you have a tie, let's say you've got three undefeated teams and then you've got three one-loss teams, you look at those three one-loss teams and who was the most dominant against their schedule. And that's pretty much the only way you can play it. Or the college football playoff selection committee is going to do even more what they've been doing in recent years, where they seem to be just falling back more and more each year to say, uh, we just select the four best teams. When they, when they have talked themselves into a corner, they come out with that slogan that they just select the four best teams, which basically means they can do whatever they want. Well, if the ACC was smart or actually cared about their football credibility, I think you're going to have a situation like that. What we talked about earlier and James – when I said Clemson would lose to Notre Dame, he said if Clemson loses to Notre Dame, they're not going to make the playoff, which I agree with him 100% on. This is a point where, where if the ACC is smart, they need Florida State to play Florida. They need Louisville to play Kentucky. They need Georgia Tech to play Georgia. They need these, these other games because Clemson's going to beat Florida State. Clemson's going to beat Louisville. Clemson's going to beat Georgia Tech. If Georgia Tech pulls an upset over Georgia – that makes Clemson's win over Georgia Tech look better. If Louisville beats Kentucky, who I think is going to be a good team in the SEC East this year, it makes their win over Louisville look better. That's why they need that ninth game. That's why I think it's important for the ACC to say we're going to have our guys play nine games. And I think that's the only way you can have some sense of equality because you've already got the Big 12, you already got the Pac-12, and the Big 10 saying we're going to have nine conference games. There's one way to solve that problem, and that's why you've got to work that out between the SEC and the ACC. It's the only logical way to have everyone have that same common nine-game schedule, and it will help out immensely instead of going eight and nine. That's going to be the biggest problem. Jason, before we let Logan or Jason go on this, uh, Clemson kid is achu- oh. accusing you of actually being a nice guy, that this is all just an act. Just oh. like to hit the zing factor, but you're actually a nice guy. What, what would be an act? The fact that I speak truths? I'm sorry. I, I keep it real. I made it, I it 100 I keep the truth real, you know, uh, and if other people can't handle it, thank you, Clemson kid, you know. I, I Logan keep, talked I, about the uh, national it. championship race and what the committee might do if we've only got conference games played. I keep losing uh, well, I guess we can go and give the SEC, we can we give them four teams in there? Maybe Ohio State can jump in there a little bit, and we'll have, probably have Dabo Sweeney complain a lot. He'll do his – he'll do his – his, um, campaigning throughout the whole season if it's just conference so he'll do his campaigning that clemson uh, you know should be in there no matter what and that's probably how the season will go and a lot of coaches are going to do a lot of campaigning it's going to be very political this upcoming season i think i think both of y'all kind of um talk some facts there i don't want to keep running into it but um you know the acc the the smaller conferences are going to have to prove that they're you know a really good team to in order to reach those playoffs you've got to be able to beat teams uh, in tough situations that, uh, you know, it's crazy now, you know, out of conference games. And then whenever you're going traveling, like neutral side games really do play a pretty interesting factor. I, I think um, uh, the first game of the seasons don't really matter too much, but in like Florida state for, for West Virginia, it's out of, it's out of Florida. You're in Atlanta, but um, obviously Florida state isn't really a big factor whatsoever in the playoff run. Uh, but whenever you're settled down just in conference games, you're going to have to take care of those teams, something Florida State has struggled with, um, and that's where you're going to have to really show that you, you know you are a powerhouse in, in the ACC, and Florida State's got to work on that. They've got a long ways to go, um, but it, it's going to create a lot of pol- political – it's going to be very political and perfect for you know a presidential run that's going on uh, during this year too, so it should be real fun. James, what do you think is the best possible solution if all the, the Power Five conferences do go to conference games and there's that nine-game versus eight-game dynamic? What, is you, what do you think is the best possible solution? I think you have to not go to a – I mean, the only way to make it fair for guys like the ACC, for Clemson, is to maybe condense the schedule, but make it your conference schedule plus, plus one main rival mm-hmm. on the outside. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, for example, even though this rivalry doesn't really matter, Georgia, Georgia Tech, like for Georgia to not be able to play Georgia Tech, which is 70 miles away from each other, but play Missouri, which is 738 miles away, makes absolutely no sense. Um, and when you're talking about Power Five, 
you're you're talking about the level of containment for the disease should be similar across the board. So I mean, the only way for it to for for the ACC to make sense would be your your, your schedule plus a um, a bordering conference that that hasn't blocked themselves away. The Big Ten has the power to be able to do that because I believe personally the Big Ten is the best conference in football, um, top to bottom. Um, they have, I think they go, I think they go five to six teams deep that can play um, against anybody. Um, you're not saying Alabama, but just they, they can be competitive against most teams. Um, but I think if you're looking at like the SEC West, they should have a, if they don't have a natural rival in another conference, they can easily border with the Big 12. Now you made the Big 12, the SEC, and the ACC even that much more stronger in their games that are going to be there. But if you only go to conference only, then it's got to become more of what basketball is. It's got to be play in with the top three, with the top three that are um, available. After that, you're going to have to expand the playoffs, which I know they had no real intentions of doing. But you know, nobody predicted the COVID. So when that comes in, that completely changes um, everything that you were already looking for. So I think that's the um, only way that they could um, make it happen is if. If you have to go conference and only play conference, one team um, gets an automatic buy-in, and then it's the next three ranked, highest-ranked teams. So that gives the SEC their opportunity to still have their two teams play for it. That gives the Big Ten, rightfully so, their opportunities to play for it. And then the ACC gets their one and, you know, so on and so on. Can, 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 we, can you go back to the previous comment, Mark? Please, please. Okay. All right, listen, people. Clemson will not lose to the Citadel. That's not okay. going to happen. MSU number one fan is a loyal viewer who has told me that Ohio State's going to go 0 and 12. So this is just kind of the rhetoric that. So he, so he drinks. Okay, got it. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. The Citadel? Come on, guys. So I think James partially answered my second question, which was going to be if you're the commissioner of the ACC, which of course, my my platform and soapbox last week was to make a mandate to Notre Dame to have to join the conference. But this week is going to be, how would you rebuild the schedule? What priorities would you put in play and why? Let's say if instead of, as you mentioned, Jason, playing an eight-game schedule, you're not allowed to play any non-conference or you've decided not to play non-conference games and you may not have anyone to play against uh, if they all decide not to play non-conference games. Let's say you're going to build a 10-game conference schedule. What games do you think? Do you have any kind of format in mind in terms of how you would build that out? See, I think I think when you say 10 games, that right now is too much. That's what's being talked about in the Big Ten. But That's nine, the only reason I bring it up. Nine games is the perfect number for a variety of reasons. Number one, it would – and this is why I think that one of the bigger mistakes in college football was going to a 12-game season. I understand why they did it. It was an extra money – extra home game for a lot of teams. But by doing that, you have a lot more six and six seasons, a lot more teams playing a six and six. In a case of 10, uh, 10 game season, there's those five and five records, but then you have a five and four team. You have the games at the end of the year deciding whether you go to a bowl game, whether you're bowl eligible or not. Looking at Notre Dame's schedule, they've already lost three games in the USC game, the Stanford game, and the Wisconsin game being canceled. And just doing my quick math right here, they have Wake Forest, Pitt, Duke, Clemson, Georgia Tech, and Louisville. So that's six ACC games right there. You find three other ACC teams to, to play them, whether it's Miami, whether it's, you know, just throwing out, you know, Syracuse or Boston College, a team like that that may not be on their schedule right there. That's how you can help out the Notre Dame issue right there, and you help out these schools that don't have a genuine SEC rival or, or could play a genuine SEC team like a Miami that could play an Auburn or, uh, you know, a Louisville that could play uh, – Louisville's going to Kentucky, but like a Pitt that could play Missouri, just using it as an example, closer teams like that. that. That's one way to help out Notre Dame, but we've said this before. Why should the ACC go out of their way to help Notre Dame? Notre Dame is nothing but take from the ACC. What has Notre Dame done to help the ACC? Notre Dame went to the playoff one time and got smoked by Clemson. What has Notre Dame's name – other than name recognition, what have they done to the ACC to help the ACC? Well, they've 
The, the trade-off has obviously benefited both sides. To a certain extent, the ACC is looking for more money. I don't agree with what the ACC has done. I made that very plain that I wouldn't cut that deal because it lowers the credibility of your conference when you let uh, a university walk all over you and say, well, we just want to join in these sports, but not football. Uh, so I've made that very clear, but I think it's still a beneficial agreement for the ACC. It just lowers the reputation of the league to be walked on like that. Uh, I think James said it last week, the the SEC wouldn't, the Big Ten would not do that. They wouldn't stand for that type of, um, you know, backhanded slap in the face by any school to say, yeah, we're not going to play you in football, but we want to play you like five or six times, but we're not going to be in the conference. Mm -hmm. But I think it benefits the ACC. I, I got to think that they're doing it because of money. That's what's benefiting the league. I just the money that Notre Dame brings. I just, on the surface, it just seems like oh, they're going out of their way to help out Notre Dame, and it just feels like a lot of give and take. True. A lot, a lot of take and take from Notre Dame's side. That's yep. what I do. Dan's walking into the buildings of WJXL in Jacksonville. Hmm. So we know that the. I don't, like, I don't like Notre Dame. Exactly. And I, I agree with you. I agree with you, Mark. It's really a punk move on our part. And it's uh, for as much as I dislike it, it's not Notre Dame's fault. They just are getting away with what they can get away with. Notre Dame. So we know that the Knowles hit the practice field today because mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we get the the, uh, the <laughs> graphic evidence from uh, Logan and James talked about it off the top. Uh, we really can't talk about much in terms of what practice was today. But do you guys have any anything? A uh, little bit. The cluster, there's just pictures coming out, I believe. Uh, of course, Florida State, the official count, tweeted some out. Um, but we're starting to get a, some looks at some guys that have been working out since this whole pandemic thing has been going on. We didn't really get to see much during spring practice. Um, there's a shot here. of uh, Let me see if I can. I wish there was a better way to view some of these. Um, of course, this was Akeem Den. He no, no longer has the dreads like we were talking about earlier. Uh, he suffered an ankle injury <coughs> before spring, so he was expecting not to see spring whatsoever, but it looks good. looks like he's had a good recovery. Um, there's pictures, the big one today, which I tweeted out earlier whenever um, the day was going on. This is true freshman linebacker Stephen Dix Jr. right here. Um, I don't know if you could see it that well, but uh, he looks actually like Florida State's first linebacker that they've had since maybe like this is kind of like a Nick Moody size right here. It's probably the biggest linebacker you've had since maybe Reggie Northrup or Nick Moody. Um, a lot of FSU fans are excited about him. He's put on 25 pounds in the last four months or so, and it seems to be that's all. That's not fat. How? Them, those legs are not fat. How? <laughs> How dare you defame Dontavious Jackson? Oh. How dare you? Dontavious, I'm not going to say anything more, but this is a different animal. That's all I'll say. This is a true freshman. I don't. I think he's kind of already surpassed Dontavious Jackson. And, and you, you've talked about this previously with, with the, the strength and conditioning team and how there, there is a new vibe going on in Tallahassee. And I think there's there's a realistic approach to this year's vibe and this year's team. But they're playing on the surface, and obviously they haven't touched a field yet for a game, but on the surface it looks like they're wanting to be that old Florida State. Now, after that first loss, whenever it is, whenever we find out, whenever the new schedule comes out or if, if anything changes or whatnot, that's going to be the biggest question is how will this team deal with adversity? Okay, spoiler alert, they're not going to go undefeated this season. What are they going to do after that first loss, whether it's Clemson, whether it's losing to a team like a, a Wake Forest or Louisville that you probably should beat, that you lose to? That's going to be the adversity that's going to see, can this program truly rebuild to what it was before the 2016 season and, and previous? Mm -hmm. I mean, we uh, I like Coach Storms. I think Coach Storms is very mm -hmm. good at what he does. But, I mean – Jesus, every year we said the exact same thing. Yeah. Look at what these guys look like. Look at their – oh, last year it was the gain, it was the gains and the losses. Um, I believe a couple of years ago it was Brian Burns who made the big gains that was that was necessary to make. Now, he couldn't do it under Jimbo. I remember a conversation that Coach O had with me um, the, the previous um, 
um, the, a strength coach about Brian Burns and his weight. Brian Burns was, was notoriously undersized coming in the entire time. He got told by some NFL scouts that he was 20 pounds too big. And Coach O told him that, and this is what you need to do. Coach O told him that on a Monday. By the next Tuesday, he had gained 12 pounds. So what he found out was that it's not a matter of if he could gain weight or couldn't gain weight. It was a matter of if he didn't gain weight and he wouldn't gain weight. So what, what I tell people is the strength and conditioning is literally on the player. If I got to motivate you at Florida State to work out mm -hmm. and take care of your body, then I'm just sorry. You you should probably go to FAU. You should probably go to Memphis. You should go to somewhere else where where a 10-win season is one of the greatest seasons in, in school history. You should not go somewhere where with a champion with a championship mindset or to try to reinvigorate a championship mindset. So, I mean, those are the things. But that being said, it's very – it is encouraging to see a guy like um, Dix, which – you can gain that kind of mass as a true freshman when you're coming, you're eating three, four square meals a day, and you're getting put on protein shakes. Because again, they made they made adjustments for these guys in their off season, even though they weren't doing it. But like what Jason referred to is what is going to happen when adversity hits. Mm -hmm. That's really what it comes down to. And what I continue to see, and what I continue to hear, still makes me question. And I'm optimistic, but it still makes me question. Because at this point, we should not be talking. We talk, Our players talk more like fans talk as opposed to what players talk. I hear a lot about, oh, this is so much different than last year. Oh, the, I've been hearing that for forever. Show me. Shut up and play. I don't need to hear about Willie Tiger. Willie Tiger not here no more. I don't need to hear about how you didn't have a, a like for football. What I need to hear is what you're going what you're doing now and how you're going to continue to push forward and i think that's where when i will know but for right now i don't know man you, you can tell these two to stop talking about willie tarrant that's all they do every single week just trying to egg me on media 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 gets the opportunity to do it fans get the opportunity to do it but if you continue to do it as a player you'll get an opportunity very quick to become a fan a lot faster than what you anticipate and that's what i try to tell a lot of these guys you don't get to do the things that the fan base gets to do. That's why you get the scholarship, and that's why the people cheer and people want to wear your jersey and play you. Well, they don't have a video game anymore, but play you on a video game. It's not the other way, way around. Now, if they ever did a, a media video game, I'd play Logan. Yeah. <laughs> I, you don't want to try this. What are we playing, though? Are we playing Call of Duty or are we playing Madden? What are we doing? Um, it would be, I was saying, like, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be Madden, definitely, but. Anyways, guys, I got to go. I got to go do radio. James, thank Appreciate you. that, James. Thank you, James. All right, yeah. guys. Yep. Be good. Thank you, be man. Good. If Mark and I had a video game battle, it would be who could talk the most. Who could just continue to talk and, you know, just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. I think I'd kick your butt, Mark. Yeah. Oh, I I, I was going to concede that and say I forfeit. 100%. Can't really? keep up with Jason you. and James. I think it's a J thing. It's a Jason and James. I'd like to see their 1v1. No, there there are ten FBS conferences. Everyone has said that, but there's a power five and there's a group of five for a reason. I'm sorry, spoiler alert, Boise State, UCF, the schools in the group of five will not make it to the playoff this year. If there is a playoff, if there is a college football season, San Diego State, go ask them, you're not gonna make it. Sorry. See, Jason, there's just a distinction there that when I have something to say, it 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 counts, it means something. I economize my words. I don't have a lot to say, but it just packs a punch. We've moved on. That was a minute ago. We've I know, on. and I didn't get a breath in to be able to, because you just kept going and going and going. BW put something. We had to correct BW. I have to lay the smack down. It's okay. It I would say, I would say the the positive thing though, and going back to what James was talking about, you know, any strength and conditioning coach should be able to do what's going on at Florida State. You know, that's what you're hired to do. The positive thing though that I think is a little bit different is that what's going on in the situation that they're at and the pandemic happening and what these guys are doing on their own. Remember, these are college kids still this my age. I really don't ever really want to go to the gym that much. Um, and those guys would ra way rather have fun. It's during the summertime in Florida. You want to go to the pool, have fun uh, and hang out with friends. But from what we've seen on, on social media and, and good things we're hearing is that they're putting in a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Um, Keyshawn Helton's, Keyshawn Helton is up at midnight 
sometimes 2 a.m. working out, doing pull-ups. He just posted it last night. It might might already be might be on so, here. And he's been doing that. It's not just like a one-week thing. He's been doing that for three months. Let's also remember um, that our state was shut down for a decent amount of time due to COVID. So there's not a lot of stuff that you can do other than work out and get ready. So let's also give that <laughs> little caveat right there that you know you have to go into the gym and work out because that's it. Or you know your home your garage and work out. So. We take pride yeah. in being accurate here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, James Warner. We appreciate your comment, but 40 years ago it was 1980. They were not playing nine game seasons. They were playing 11 game seasons. You can go ahead and look it up, but James does a fantastic job and uh, loves his college football and the Buckeyes in particular. So James, we always appreciate your comments, but if I have uh, an opportunity to correct, of course I, I will. Because you always have to look Are you doing this at midnight? Are you doing this at midnight? I'll try no, no, just a reminder, just a reminder, just a reminder real quick. 12 30 in the morning. He's in Pensacola. They were having workouts at 6 a.m. They were having workouts at 6 a.m. This is 12. Now, hold on. Is he in Tallahassee or is he in Pensacola? Because Pensacola is Central Time. This is Tallahassee. They've all moved around and moved places. We get it. You have a nice phone. We get it. What are you, Android? No, I've got like the iPhone 4 here. Oh my goodness gracious! We need we need sponsors, Mark. We've got to get an upgrade. We've got to give him an upgrade. Apple. If I had my way, I'd still have a flip phone. All right. I don't need. I work around computers. I don't need to send emails. I don't need to check Facebook while I'm in line at the deli getting a pastrami sandwich. I don't need that. Okay. Right? I would never get a pastrami sandwich. I'm getting a pub sub. Of course you are. <laughs> Good like. How many likes are we at? 71. Oh, man, we almost reached it. Mark, Hopefully Redbird's still in here. I don't know if he was lying to us. Mark, tell me you get a pastrami sandwich at least. Pastrami? pastrami no, that's not my choice. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's it's doable. Yeah. We're going to get Logan some culture here. A little culture for Logan. Oh, you, have no friends, you have no friends from South Florida. You're at Florida State. We run the camp. I have to go down there. I have to go down there. Trust me, there is a lot of South I know. Florida people that come up, and I notice them. That's for sure. There was a story about how the Miami English, and I always used to say that when I was at FSU, you could tell somebody was from South Florida if they said the word bro in their sentence. That's a very South Florida thing to say, bro. If somebody said bro, you're like, oh, you're from Kendall. They're like, yeah, how'd you know? Because you said bro. <laughs> Thanks, someone else. Came in here too. Luke Walker, he's usually a regular guest. What's up, Luke? He said uh, that's how 90% of linebackers usually look. Well, not at Florida State. Not at Florida State. That's it. This is this is big for FSU fans to have a linebacker look that size. You might have had him um, at your team of your choice. I'm guessing it's North Carolina. They're looking at the profile yes. picture. But, uh, the reason we're talking about it is because Florida State fans and people covering Florida State haven't seen that size since 2010. That's that's crazy. 2010, 2011, 2012. That's almost a 10 year situation. So calling into the show, but now, uh, no, no calls tonight. Now, Austin asked an interesting question. We've kind of, we've, he's a Canes fan. We've obviously, we've taken shots at the Miami fans in the past and the Miami team talking about how their lack of fans in the stadium and whatnot. But he does bring up an interesting point. How do you think it the, is. the games will affect the players? So, Logan, I will ask you if you're in Doe Campbell, let's say Florida State is playing. Boston College inside there, you don't have 60, 70, 75,000 people doing the chop, going crazy. What, how do you think that affects them? Uh, if it were me, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Florida State side of things with a new coach coming in and everything and all, everything they had to deal with. I think it really affects FSU. And then even pros are talking about LeBron James has, has said things about it. Having fans in the stands really gives you a lot of motivation. That's why you really want to play football. You play even Friday nights in high school are, are awesome. You got the lights down. You've been uh, you've been working out all summer and spring, but also you get into having uh, you get it. You're all throughout the week. You're wearing your jersey on Fridays. And you're there to play uh, on Friday night. Sorry, I'm a little distracted because we've got. The big donos guy. He just sent seventy five dollars in. Seventy five. Good God! A shout Bam. out to Red, Red Beard. Beard. Yeah, he kept it word too. 
First of all, let, let's stop. You went to Charles High, so you weren't you didn't have a lot of fans in the stands at your game. So let's let's be honest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Our senior year though, playoffs for the first time. It started racking up whenever we were competing hard with God be there in the fourth quarter. It was like, mm, we might start going to those Charles games. But going back to like Doe Campbell Stadium, man, you it, not having the war chant going on, I don't care if it's going through the speaker system or whatever. You know, you you, you go there to watch fans and, and they're doing the, the war chant out in the stands. And it just it gives you a different kind of mentality, man. You, you want to hit somebody harder. Um, shoot, I've been out on the field and heard the war chant before a Clemson game, and I kind of want to just run out there. I would have been obliterated, but it makes me just want to go hit somebody. So it's all about having that energy and drive that you're going to get from having fans there. It's probably going to be diminished by a good amount. That's most certainly uh, expected. But, you know, if there's no fans whatsoever, uh, no fans whatsoever, I just don't know how they'll be able to do it in college football anyways. But if that happens, you're really going to lose a lot of the fun part of, you know, being at a university and, and playing in college football. That is the main thing while I will watch college football is because the fan base and the environment and the atmosphere, that's why you're staying on watching at 8 p.m. You're watching a game and you're like, mm, I'll just probably keep watching it and, you know, keep and keep uh, keep an eye on how the stands is and, you know, the whole effect of the crowd. But it's not like an NFL game. So I think it's going to – it would dramatically hurt college football. Uh, I, 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 I think it's going to end up being 25% capacity. I think that's where you're going to get. So if you're in Joe Campbell stadium seats, about 80,000, you'll have 20,000 in there. You've got to have, I think Logan hit the nail on the head. You have to have some, some fans there, whether it's Florida state fans, Florida fans, Miami fans, whatever. George, sorry. I'm going to, re I'm going to respond to the comment on the screen because you know, George, what's even more irritating that I won't answer your call is that you're calling. That's, that's irritating me even more than that's irritating you. This is not a call-in show, and once it becomes a call-in show, if it does, we're not going to prioritize Florida fans on a Florida State live show. Yeah. Get off our phone, <laughs> George. Get off All right, George, we don't take calls on this show. So Mark just told George to go eat it. You He's know called like five times at least. I've heard, I've heard the calling. That's how I felt yeah. earlier. I, was, I had to mute my mic because I was telling the person to just Mark, cut the – Mark, for, for our special episode – I've decided that I will, and this may be the biggest mistake I've made here in wow. the 61 episodes of Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football for my birthday episode, <laughs> September 1st, September 1st. It's a couple weeks away. Calm down. Six weeks away. 60, 62 episodes. Jason is 61. I'm 61 for 61. We can talk about this later. I want to do a call in show for my birthday. Sounds good. I will. I will. I, it's all up to Mark, Jason. It's all up to we'll, Mark. We'll put that before the board. The, we are the board. It's the three of us. <laughs> Two votes. We got it. Shout out James, to James isn't here, and my vote counts for four. So I'm four. down for that's That's a very rigged election there. You got uh, Mr. G14 classified. It's always great to see him. Came in a little yeah. bit late, so watch the replay. Those of you joining us late, Melissa May, um, mm -hmm. she and she and Jason always have a thing going here between Melissa yeah. and, and Jason. So I just um, that Alabama crap that she's got around her picture. That's all I'm saying. I get that she's an Alabama fan, but it's it's disgusting. So before we go, now that we are in the overtime portion of our show, as the overtime on Mark Rogers TV, where it's college football presented by Natural Light official sponsor of Logan, if you take a look behind yeah. me. Yeah. So, Logan, we're going to do this real quick. We talked about it last week. Give me your your best and worst-case scenarios, assuming there's a 12-game season, nothing changes, <laughs> and we all know Florida State would not go 12-0 because they still have to play Clemson. Smart-ass Mark Rogers. What is Florida State's best and worst-case scenario of a 12-game yeah. season? Best-case scenario – Florida State wins a national championship in the first year under Mike Norvell, and they beat every team by 80 points, along with James Blackman winning the Heisman and every offensive and defensive player winning every award. Also, along with that, 
<laughs> I know what you're meaning. I know what you're meaning. I think best, the best, that is, the best that is in reality, I think is nine and three. I'm thinking eight and four. Uh, I think worst case scenario uh, is definitely just getting six wins and barely making a bowl game. That's probably the worst case scenario. Uh, that'd be really, really tough for Mike Norvell's first season. Um, eight and four is beautiful. I think that's great for recruiting for Mike Norvell and staff moving forward. Eight and four will probably will get you a few. Uh, will get you a few uh, talented uh, uh, offensive linemen too. Uh, and definitely at other positions of need, you'll start getting those big cats that you've been recruiting hard, but you've been missing on um, those big five star cats. Um, eight and four is solid, but nine and three takes you to a different level. Um, national television is now back in Tallahassee. Um, all eyes are on Tallahassee and Doe Campbell. Um, and people are wondering about, you know, Mike, you know, start talking about Mike Norvell and, you know, he could be the next uh, young coach to really bring in. Uh, a national championship in the next uh, three or four years at FSU. Shoot, less than that, two to three. Now, I took it a little step further in both directions for you. So best case scenario, and, and let's just be honest right now, Florida State is going to lose to Clemson. Thank you, BGPO Football Funk. Thank, thank you for the $5 donation. We appreciate it. The, we're going to lose to Clemson. It's going to happen. And right now, if the season was played right now, we would probably lose to Florida. Legitimately, I think Florida State could win all of the other 10 games on the schedule. It's all going to be how that season starts before Clemson. And once again, this is assuming that nothing changes and we still have the schedule. If Florida State comes into that Clemson game 4-0, which is, it could happen. They could come into that game 4-0. You've got wins over Boise State. You've got win on the road at NC State. You've beaten West Virginia and Atlanta. You've got decent wins under your belt, and you've got that mentality we can get this done. That's the best case scenario. The best case scenario is that Florida State finishes the regular season 10 and 2 and ends up in the Orange Bowl as the ACC representative because Clemson still makes the college football playoff. That's the best case scenario. Florida State comes down here to South Florida, comes down to Miami Dade County, plays in the Orange Bowl. The worst case scenario is that Florida State, for the first time since 1974, loses at least nine games. And that is something that could also happen. Florida State has one guaranteed win on their schedule. Sanford. That's it. That's the only guaranteed win right now on the schedule. And if they go up to Atlanta and lose to West Virginia, if they go out to Boise State and lose to the Broncos and then lose to NC State, there's also a chance that just like they could be undefeated going into the Clemson game, they could also be one and three. And if you're one and four after the Clemson game, the bottom will drop out. So best case scenario, 10 and two off to the Orange Bowl. Worst case scenario, three and nine for the most losses since 1974. Our guy, uh, DeAndre, um, alias BGPO Football Funk, uh, called me the other night during our call-in show, and we started comparing Clemson and Florida State NFL products. I, I think that's something we need to table for another time here. Mm -hmm. Give it a little thought, guys. We're talking, obviously, currently, but also talking all time, of course. And... Um, yeah, that's, it's an interesting topic. That's easy. It is? All-time FSU, obviously. All-time Florida State has obviously NFL players. All-time of the last 10 years, it's absolutely Clemson. Well, no, I'm talking all-time. I, I, think, I think it might be closer than you think it is. Who would you say are the five best Clemson players in the of NFL? All-time? Of all-time. Probably DeAndre Hopkins... Michael Dean Perry, Deshaun Watson, Dwight Clark. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm missing all sorts of guys. And you're doing homework. Off the top of my head. And so two of those guys you just Spiller. two of those guys you just said played at Clemson in the last what six seasons? Deshaun Watson yes. 2015, 2016. It was 2016 when they won the national. Sure. Season. Yes. So that's my argument. If you say all time. Florida State brings guys to the table like you talked about Deion Sanders, Terrell Buckley, Fred Belitnikoff. They bring, you know, Derek Brooks, they sure. bring Jones. They bring in all these guys. So all time, I think Florida State has the edge. The oh. last ten years, Clemson absolutely blows us out of the water. So I would, I yeah, I would tend to agree that if somebody just put a gun to my head and without me thinking or looking anything up, yeah, Florida State. But um, 
our guy DeAndre brought up um, quite a few. No, quite a few, uh, Clemson players that uh, I didn't necessarily think of right out of the gate. Clemson is like Charles High, you know. They had that that good season, yeah. went to the playoffs. Who'd you guys? They play? haven't been since. They haven't been since. Sadly. Now, who'd you guys play in the playoffs? Now, I don't want to rag because my high school team was horrible. We went one and nine my senior season. We went to the playoffs one year, and we got blown out by Crystal River. And I remember because Crystal River has a nuclear power plant that you could see from right one of their end zones, like it's maybe a couple hundred yards away. And we would all be sitting there going, I wonder if that thing blows, if we're all going to die. <laughs> that, would, that, played, that was a good idea. I think the uh, we played against Timmy Jernigan's Columbia. Oh. Uh, we hung around him for a good while, but we had lost our starting uh, fullback for that game, and it, our offense was definitely utilized. Utilized our fullback really hard. And we started utilize. We had to throw in a whole new package with our backup run, uh, quarterback. He was a wide receiver, but he played a lot of snaps at quarterback that game to try to switch up and try to fake off Columbia, but it didn't really work too well. So we had to run a lot of different schemes, and it sucked. But um, yeah, but we hasn't haven't been to the playoffs since. Sadly, haven't been. Shout out to the Timberwolves of Charles High School. Shout out. Yeah, shout out T Wolf, baby. Shout out T Wolf. Anybody's listening? If you're a T Wolf, throw it in the chat. Also, Melissa May says, "Oh, and by the way, Jason, I love smart asses. You and I would probably end up being good friends." Ha ha. We probably would, and I, I do love my smart ass women. <laughs> okay, but do that you didn't ring off the tongue too well. That didn't really come off the tongue too well. I mean, I I I, I already was married to one cane. I don't know if I want to jump into the game again with an Alabama person of all people. I don't know. So, <laughs> Well, I don't think that's where the route she was going. She wanted a good, clean college football friendship to talk college football with you. Yeah, Jason. but let's, let's be honest. You see this baby face right here, and then it just goes from friendship to something more. <laughs> they, they can't help themselves. That's, okay. that's obvious. Yes. I've got a sensible house, a nice 401k. I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a cash. I'm a solid six, six and a half. Out of this is the part where Jason uses Mark Rogers, the voice of college football TV show, to uh, use uh, this show as tender. This pandemic has sucked for my dating life. Let me tell you that. There's right a now. little give and take there, sure. Yeah. It could be a win win situation for both Jason and I. No, I mean, no problem there. This is it's worked like, out. Gives him a little FaceTime. It's worked out for Mark. It's worked out. The pandemic has ruined my JJ profile, my, my match.com profile, my black people meet.com profile. It has ruined everything for me because I got to put a map there or anything. Logan, so, by the way, that had nothing to do with, you know, there, there, that's not how I, I reeled that in. That didn't Oh, happen. that was a different, that was a different way. Okay. Yeah. A little social medium. Um, well, I was maneuver. trying to give Jason I'm hope. Not here. I was trying to give Jason hope. That was the main thing. You know, yeah. there is something like that that could happen. You know, sure. That's, Absolutely. I know black, black people I'm amused by George's pursuit here. So at first, uh, I don't want the VIP treatment. Yeah. I didn't want to talk to them anyway. So he called six times, but didn't want to talk to us. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe they had a chance to talk to me and they said no. I've never said anything, but I might George become never. a little bit more exclusive. I'm just trying to don't take my call and see how that works out for you. <laughs> Let's see. We're still rolling. We're still talking. We're doing good, George. <laughs> what they got going on in Gainesville? Uh, he's I love he's in Oregon. Uh, this is our Oregon guy, is it not? I love yeah. that Oregon. Well, yeah, now I know Oregon. why. What are you doing? Hey, on the reefer. Yeah, you're in Tallahassee. Let's call him down there, Chief. There's a lot of that going on in Tallahassee. It's, it's, well, duh. <laughs> so, DeAndre, it's just a conversation for another time. We'll we'll line up Clemson and Florida State, but uh, yeah, off the top of my head, it's uh, as Jason outlines. It appears to be a Florida State. I don't want to say run away, but um, a nice little lead all time, as it's been the better program all time. Clemson, Clemson's coming through in the fourth quarter. They're making a nice comeback in the fourth quarter. Here. They're trying. They're yeah. trying to see if Florida State can stop them. Hopefully. They're on a good run, though. That's for sure. Next week, Steve Fuller. Really? That's what you're Backup going to Backup quarterback for the Bears. You're bringing Steve Fuller. Steve Fuller into this picture. Okay, great. Next week. <laughs> Next week on our Dear God, I Hope We Have Football segment here of Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, I'll give you my playoff prediction yep. if we had a playoff. 
<laughs> Give me my ACC bowl predictions if we have bowl games. What is? I wouldn't go to Georgia's late. Uh, Georgia's comment at eight seventeen is a little scary. Eight seventeen. Yeah, oh. it's a few comments ago. It's getting. Did I make that chicken noise? Bark, bark, bark. Not, not that one. There's another one. You're gonna see it. Get. He's getting. He's bored. What George, you- the way this works is I don't have your phone number and you don't have my phone number. I would not give out my phone number. So the phone call in show line is not my phone number. So people think sometimes that they can call me. They can't call me. They don't know that my phone number, I don't know their phone number. It, it's a buffer phone call. It's a number that you see and I see the same one. It connects the phone lines. We have a special group of fans here watching tonight on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Shout out to Redbeard again for your $75 donation. Absolutely. So so the roll call on these, uh, just to catch up with everyone. So Redbeard with a huge donation. Wheelkey451, hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you so much for the contribution, as well as William Callum, Mike Williams again, the big Canes fan coming through, New King God, and BGPO Football Funk. We appreciate all your support. Sincerely, we love you guys. Even the Canes fans, even the Gators fans, we still love you guys. You guys watch us. We appreciate your support. Sincerely, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate it. Wow, that was really emotional there. Jeez, that was nice. At least one. That, that was nice. Shot in the throw balls everywhere. Wait, what the hell? What? <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. I don't know. I'm telling you, he's on something. He's he's smoking something. Swat Whatever it is, I kind of want it. They had me charged with 600 cases. What the? All right, we're going to end this here. I think it's time to go at this point. Yeah, I'm nobody, scared. Give, nobody give away your location. Yeah, no one should. I don't, I'm don't. i not in Tallahassee anymore. No, I'm nowhere even close to South Florida. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we need to have a call-in show. We'll have to do one soon. September 1st, my birthday edition. It'll be the birthday edition of Rag Jason Parker on his birthday. We're going to beat. I'm going to go ahead and tell you ahead of time we're going to beat you this year as you can safely place a bet on Florida. I said this a month ago that Florida would win. Where the hell were you, George? <laughs> George, you said this already. Melissa says, puff, puff, go, George. <laughs> Dang. What for me? You are right. Melissa-, Melissa had asked earlier for both of you to uh, let her know where they can find you. Oh, where I don't she, where have, she can find you and everybody else. We don't. I don't personally have a YouTube channel. That I mean, we we have a channel, but I, we don't do much on it. But we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. That's where I would go at Null Game Day for about most of those. You can find us, and we have a podcast. If you enjoy uh, th- this voice, uh, you can go listen to the podcast uh, called "Hear the Spear." <laughs> Dear God, Did you really just really really. Uh, I had to do something. We got to get the ratings up. I'm over on NBC6 down in South Florida. You can follow me on Twitter at at JPZ333, which is a shout out to a former Dolphins linebacker, Joey Porter, and a former Steelers linebacker. Uh, to that one there. Put put your um and your match.com user ID. Back, my match.com, uh, JDay, Black People Meet. Uh, I think I got signed up for Farmers Only, which I don't know why, but I think I'm on that one. I'm not sure. Uh, Christian, Mingle, Christian Mingle, that one should be interesting. Um, so yeah, so at this point, it's just the desperation mode. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, it got fun. interesting quick. We really need we need sports in general, but we really need really, 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 really need football to come. Game out. Miami at ten thirty on Tuesday night to take it on Philadelphia Union. That's our soccer coverage. Cats are on the screen here right now. Yeah, cats are about to get slung out of this window. Baseball starts next week. Hey, Chad, shout out to Chad. Chad I thought I said the wrong name. Chad, thank you for listening. I appreciate that. We have a few listeners sometimes coming in here, but we have a new episode coming out later this week. We're giving Dustin a little break, our co-host, because his his, his dad is going down to Gainesville to get checked up on. Uh, but we'll be recording soon. Uh, but thank, definitely appreciate you listening, Chad, a ton. So- so if he's going to be gone, do we get to hear more of your silky smooth voice? Logan, or I might, you might see about a 25% increase in my voice. Okay. I, 
C or C or a 25% increase? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I know where you're going with that, but I, you know, it's late. It's 822. I haven't even made my dinner yet. I feel like we're 22 minutes into overtime. We're in the overtime section here. Sponsored by (laughs) ChristianMingle.com. I don't know if Christian Mingle would want to come in here and sponsor us, but if they do, we can clean it up a little bit more. Jewish guy on Christian Mingle. (laughs) I'm on all of them at this point. You know, why not? You know, hey, Jason, since you've got an in with all of these various dating sites, shoot, Uh you can contact them anytime. You get them to sponsor us. I don't care who they are. We get match. We'll be the dating, uh, the college football channel of dating sites. The match of the week, sponsored by match.com. Yeah. (laughs) The oil. Boy, what was he thinking? Sponsored by J Day. The I'm gonna pray on this. Sponsored by Christian Mingle. This has a chance. You know what? We should market it that way. The e- harmony, as as an ironic twist of a of a uh, of a sponsorship. E harmony right. uh, sponsoring the uh, debate of the week, the dispute of the week. You know, the Willie Tagger dispute of the week, possibly the Willie. Taggart argument, debate, something. Well, Get something there. Well, there it is. I do it. You're Willie, much better at that than I am. Will Willie Taggart have a better record than Mike Norvell in his first season? <laughs> By the way, we did confirm that George was uh, having a good puff puff. Yeah, uh, okay, good. But, we have confirmed that in the chat, so we were right. No. The thing we were right about tonight. Uh, COVID dating equal. <laughs> oh, never mind. I <laughs> COVID da- dating equals. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Not- yeah. I'm not, I'm not, we won't have Christian Mingle on here for long if we talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Co- COVID has put a, a serious hamper on the dating life. We'll just say that. Yes. So and we'll Luke- have to make sure everybody out there, because we'll have specific segments sponsored by, you know, Christian Mingle or Match that you'll will have to sway you toward. You know, your comments are going to have to fit the the the, the sponsor. OK. You OK. Never, you never know what you're going to get here on the overtime section. Yes. The overtime section gets a little wild. It gets a little. Usually, yeah. You know. The chat gets a little bit more R-rated after the PG-13 show. Shout out to my friends who signed me up for J-Date as a joke because they know that, that that I won't date a Jewish woman. There can only be one Jew in a relationship, and that's me. Um, <laughs> shout out to myself for signing up for BlackPeopleNewy.com. Um, this is for Jason. No, no, I'm not on Grindr. I'm heterosexual. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. Luke, I want to be friends with you, but I'm not in love with you, so... Shame on everybody that wore masks one time. You literally didn't have your hair cut out of your Oh, hey, I, I guess I should. I knew I should have known with George. I, I didn't uh, screen that one. <laughs> up there. This is getting rough. Okay. <laughs> Christian Mangle here.com. We've, lost, we've probably lost all revenue on this one. That one YouTube just got popped. Gonna, YouTube's going to put this one on ice. Go up next week to see what George has to say when he tries to call in 12 times. In that <laughs> All right, gentlemen. <laughs> I'll use the term Mark. loosely, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Yes, thank you. Tonight at 7. See you Tuesday at 7.